Okay, welcome to the latest uh, Democracy for Developer blog thing. Uh, I am Cliff Harris, Cliffsky. I'm the lead coder designer um, on the game. Lots has happened. Massive amounts of stuff has happened. Um, one of those things is that we can play as Canada. Um, but the probably the biggest thing, uh, which I quickly mention, is that the game is now in early access. So uh, you can now get the game on Steam. You can now get the game on GOG. You can now get... Do, do people say GOG or do they say GOG or good old games? I don't know. Um, and you can now get the game on the Humble Store. You can, of course, still buy the game direct from us using the Itch widget at the moment. And um, we've, we've changed. Uh, and you get a Steam key with that. You get a Steam key from the Humble Store as well. Obviously, GOG do their own thing. Um, all sorts of stuff to announce about all this soon. It's going to be exciting. Anyway, um, so yeah, we're in early access and that kind of has a little bit of an impact on... That's that bug I need to fix. Um, it has a little bit, a little bit of an impact on the progress of the game because um, there's an enormous amount of admin associated when you suddenly release on these stores. You have to do a lot of stuff. The developer has to do a lot of stuff. And then suddenly there's these thousands of extra people who are playing the game and uh, they don't know about this, the forums that we have on our website. So they ask a lot of questions that I need to jump in and answer and say, no, we're not doing that, or yes, that's in the game, or no, it doesn't work like that, or whatever. Um, so it takes up a load of time. So there's been um, less work done on um, balancing and adding content to the game in the last two weeks than there is normally. Um, we do a lot of work. So uh, a lot of stuff has, has happened in the last two weeks. And things will speed up a little bit now because um, that initial load of admin and tedious nonsense is, is now kind of out of the way and we can get back into making the game better. So um, we added Canada, Canada, um, home of maple syrup and politeness. Um, <laughs> we sort of like always try and research what is it about a country that a country is known for and it's slightly tongue in cheek but, um, but, but not massively I mean like Canada is known for, for, for ice hockey and, and maple syrup and these are not bad things and politeness is certainly not a bad thing um, I love Canada I've been to Canada a few times um, I've been to British Columbia but I've been to Banff twice uh, I went to the last time I left this country um, was to go to a games conference and sort of mini holiday in, in Banff um, which is one of the most amazing places um, and I celebrated my uh, my birthday there and did a helicopter trip over um, the mountains in Canada um, for my birthday. And it was unbelievable. One of the most amazing things I've ever done. Um, Canada has a boost in the game um, for uh, tourism. Um, there is a lot of tourism to Canada. Um, it, is a, it is a kind of like major industry. Uh, and uh, no surprise, because it is absolutely beautiful. Anyway, Canada is in the game. Um, had a lot of trouble modeling Canada and getting it right. So Canada starts off um, with you unpopular and I can't get this to change. I, I can't get the balance of it right yet. Obviously loads more time will go into this um, to make it better. Um, so you start off as kind of being, being um, unpopular even though you're not. And it's, it's worth me talking about this screen because it really matters because people say, oh, why am I so unpopular? And then people will also say, I didn't seem to change much and then suddenly I became very popular. Okay, so there's a few things in here. Um, th this is a, a, a chart, I've probably spoken about it before, that shows you people's opinions of you. So if, if you've got a little dot at the top here, people are fanatically supportive of you. Halfway up, um, th they're supportive of you enough to probably vote for you. Right at the bottom, that they're, they're fanatically opposed. And when you look at a, like, like a simple number like this, the popularity of, of a party, what you're basically asking is how many of these dots are above the 50% mark? I should mark it on here really, because um, that's the point at which people will vote for you. What it does not tell you is how soft that support is, which is a term that's used a lot in, in like political polling. They're saying those numbers are soft. Um, so um, what that means is, um, and how solid is your support? So for example, take this voter here, who we can look at, Tyler Taylor. I think we can click on that. I can't remember if you can click on that voter and go through to, um, maybe you can't. Um, you can on some of the, the screens. Um, 
I should make it on this screen actually because it's easy. Anyway, Tyler Taylor, right, um, is obviously very, very keen um, on our party. So they're up here, okay? Now they get one vote, um, like everyone, and if they vote, which is a big thing, if they vote, um, we will only get uh, one vote from that person. Now, if they were here, well, let's say here to be safe, um, they'd still only get one vote. They'd still vote for us because it's more than 50% um, support. Uh, so it doesn't it really doesn't matter. So really what you need, what you want um, in politics, it, it, it's very complicated, but it's very interesting. So, so kind of what you want is you want everyone to cross over, well, you want 50% or more of the electorate to cross over the 50% line, but you don't really want to put any effort into pushing them any further because it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, okay? The only way in which it matters is if that you want them to become members of your party, which will mean they'll definitely vote, um, and, and they will donate to the party a small amount, um, or become activists, in which case they will help get out the vote on election day. Okay, so you kind of, as a, a politician, you have two slightly opposing uh, demands. You have, I want to get people to, to vote for me on the day. And I also want to have a hardcore of people who are going to join the party and donate to me and all the rest of it. But what really matters is you get them over that 50% line. So um, this is kind of like one of the things that is emergent from the game, okay, um, that you will kind of learn about politics from the game. And that is um, kind of the power of compromise. So if you're really into politics and you're really actively engaged, um, let me just show you what I mean um, in another way. So we look at the happiness distribution of the everyone group, which is here. Here we can click on the individual voters. Um, so, uh, so let's pick a voter here, Oliver Taylor. Okay, 53.74% approval of my party. Fine, right? They're gonna they're gonna vote for me. They're pretty upset as an environmentalist. Um, they're not particularly happy either as a as a capitalist or a self-employed person. But because they're on low income, because they're poor, um, and because they're a farmer, and um, they're very liberal, these things have just about pushed them over the edge to vote for me, and that's that's fine. So I've only just got these got this individual person's vote okay um, but that's fine so it, it, it's kind of hard to explain but what I'm getting at is that like if you're an extremist party um, and the population is not extreme um, which is another thing um, you will end up with it with a really fierce like but small collection of fanatically supportive people and you'll lose every single election because actually what you need is you need that 50% so you need to get people to cross the line okay now why am I even mentioning this the reason I'm mentioning this is to explain this part of the game so uh, popularity is quite low right but we don't know where all these people are um, until we look here so if they're just be just below the 50% line and actually if you look there's a big cluster here it's not far off me becoming very popular. This big cluster here, and you can see it in the Family Values Party, which is the, like the middle of the road party. Um, they have loads of members, more than the, the opposition. They've got loads of, uh, uh, of members here. And so there's a big cluster of people who are kind of thinking about voting for me, um, but they're not quite there yet. Okay, if everyone was down here, then my numbers would be more worrying, even though the, the popularity numbers would be exactly the same. Uh, and this is something that even it seems to me a lot of politicians don't understand, especially uh, fairly extremist politicians don't understand. They think, well, energize the base. It's like, that's great. The base is like 1% of the electorate. Brilliant, well done. They're very energized. They were going to vote for you anyway. Anyway, enough of that. So um, this is Canada. Who? Canada has this, the Northwest Passage. I did a bit of like reading and I just, I knew about it anyway, but like I wanted to check it's a real thing. And I read to check that it has some kind of impact. So um, there is a trade route uh, over the, the kind of like North border of, of, of Canada um, that is, is really difficult to, to navigate but as uh, climate change uh, makes the the ice melt um, it becomes a, a more economically viable route 
Okay, so uh, this is in the game partly because it's a thing that uh, only happens to Canada. So it's specific to Canada, and we like things to be uh, to feel like you're playing a particular map. Um, but also, it's something that's really unusual in that it is a positive impact of climate change. It's a positive impact purely economically and purely for this country. Um, in that, as the average temperature goes up, um, you will get more trade as Canada um, because your shipping routes are less hazardous. Um, I like things like that. Um, not climate change um, I, I, I like things that are in that make you think ah I'm playing Canada now so actually I need to be aware of this and international trade international trade is going to boost GDP and that's going to make everything lovely so um, so it's you know it it's a specific thing to Canada um, a bunch of other stuff went in including uh, like colorblind palettes uh, which will not be perfect and I welcome feedback this is dark mode I'm playing the game in dark mode if you're thinking I've seen screenshots of Democracy 4, it doesn't look like this, what's going on? Um, this is dark mode. Um, we also have other modes are available, light mode. Boom! Now, if you're colorblind, there are various different types of colorblindness. I don't have colorblindness, I have all sorts of other... Um, I, I am stereo blind, which is really weird and really unusual. Um, which means I can't see 3D movies. Um, and it means I only really look at one eye at, at a time. Um, weirdly, VR works perfectly. People always say, well, surely virtual reality doesn't work. No, it's a completely different phenomena. Um, anyway, um, but I don't have color blindness, so I don't know, right? Uh, you can get online tools to show you what color blindness looks like to try and make an app, a website, a game um, to work in color blind mode. And so I've done my best, right? So the most common form seems to be, I don't know how to say it, deuteranopia. Um, so we have. Um, this. This is colorblind mode. Um, or this is that particular type of colorblindness. Now if you're looking at this um, now and you're not colorblind, everything seems to have changed colors in a slightly strange way. Um, but hopefully um, this makes sense now if um, if you have that sort of colorblindness in terms of the, 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 the reds and the, I've got to think about this now, <laughs> the reds, I think that's green. Um, you can now tell the difference better if you if you uh, if you have that. Um, so we have that, and then we have like another mode for it, um, which is the dark mode version of the same thing. Um, because just because you're you're you're, you're color blind doesn't mean that you don't want to uh, have the option of, of of dark mode. Anyway, we can edit these. They're just text files. And if you think any of the, um, we're going to support modding with them. So like if you think um, I like dark mode, but it's a bit too dark. Or like, can we just not have a mode where everything's purple? Like, whatever, I don't care. Um, we're going to support that as modding. It's literally a text file that sets a load of values when we read it in. Um, so I wanted to, to like show you the interface in dark mode slightly and also remind people that you can play like this. You can see what's most influential in the game. You can see what has the highest values. You can see what's popular and unpopular. Um, income tax, unpopular, wiretapping very unpopular in Canada. Um, you can see where the money's coming and going, mostly through income tax, mostly to pensions. Um, very different in the United States where military is massive. Um, or you can look at the default which weights all of those values together in what it thinks is the most valid uh, way to look at things. Okay, what else is done? So we've gone into early access. Um, we've uh, added um, Canada and we've done support for uh, color palettes. There's, a, uh, there's tons of, of little things. Something we did do is we changed the ministers a bit. Um, where are the ministers? Ministers, ministers. Um, the, they used to be created in a kind of random way in terms of their attributes. Their attributes are now based on the actual electorate. So if like you're three or four terms in and you've turned everyone in the country to be socialist, when um, new ministers um, arrive, which they do over time, you will find that those ministers tend to be socialist. In other words, the ministers are now reflective of the population, and I think that's a good thing. Um, the build that I'm looking at right now is um, a new one that I'm gonna check in um, today and update for everyone. It fixes that horrible bug where you sometimes see an icon up here. It fixes, I, I really hope and I think, um, a bug where the game would seem to get really slow and bogged down and then you couldn't do anything and there was like lag. Um, that was just an error message being spammed out and that um, should be fixed. It makes 
hyperinflation and inflation and the debt crisis much worse um, because uh, you, at the moment you can kind of just carry on with them and kind of brazen it out okay it also takes away slightly the superpower that the US had uh, the US has this uh, reserve currency flag in it that means that it's it can run a bigger deficit with less impact on its credit rating than other countries that's been nerfed slightly um, so so that's going in also if you have two video cards on your PC if you have like a really rubbish one and then you have a really leak one that kicks in for games um, hopefully I fixed this thing in that it will now pick automatically enable the, uh, the, the really good video card because um, some people are having uh, terrible problems with that um, anyway so a lot has gone on so this is democracy 4 um, it is in <laughs> it's in early access and for we, we Canada's the last country we added we're going to add um, Spain we're going to add Italy we're going to add Australia and then we're going to ask people what country they would like and I like the idea of South Korea um, we're not sure what's happening with translations I was gonna get a translation company then I came across a website that does crowdsource translations and we're looking into that but I'm kind of veering back the other way now and I don't know but yes the game will be translated in loads of languages and that will happen soon um, so um, if you bought through itch they seem to be having trouble giving out the steam keys I've given them but please be patient you'll still get all of the updates and everything and you will get a steam key it's just that it seemed to have a bug at the moment with that um, if you bought through humble they have steam keys as well um, if you uh, if you did buy the game on Steam uh, and you like the game, it's so appreciated if you leave a positive Steam review, okay? Because um, the problem is um, with a game like this, people pick it up and they play it, and if they love it, they play it for hours and hours and hours, and they're busy playing it. Whereas if you have a, a, a bug or a complaint about the game, you quit and you leave a negative review. So reviews tend to skew against games like this that, that people spend hours playing because the last thing they think of then is, is to review it. Um, we really appreciate uh, positive reviews. Um, it helps let other people um, sort of you know know about the game um, and it keeps Steam promoting the game and, and, and that's important because that's how people hear about it. We don't have a big marketing budget or anything like that. We don't have loads of like uh, you know loads of PR people in in some office somewhere um, so it's it's really appreciated it doesn't have to be a work of art if you look at like some of the positive reviews they're like fun game that's it it doesn't matter it's statistical right if you want to write a really long review about how awesome the game is that's great too um, if you think if you're a twitch streamer this is the game for you okay this is the game for you because people love it in twitch streams because in chat you can ask people what to do so you can be here and you can say should we should we tax cannabis more or less and people have an opinion um on on your twitch stream so um you know get streaming it it's cool anyway i need to stop there because my voice is giving out thank you for buying the game thank you for supporting the game i'll do another thing in two weeks we'll have loads of balanced stuff to talk about um, and we'll talk about the next country that's going in, although that's probably going to be about a month until we get the, um, the next country in. Probably Australia, I'm not sure. Anyway, thank you for watching and I will see you in two weeks.